What is good? We got the OG tripod cooking. Welcome into the FF Dynasty. We got running back ranking slash tiers rolling here. Gonna do the top 12, 15. Got my guy Big Co over here, all all fresh and loosened up from from a massage. So yeah. I mean, you could take whatever he's got to say with a grain of salt right now. He's <laughs> feeling so loosey goosey. <laughs> Not feeling so salty. It's a little bit more luby. Yeah. We got old Jason over here on the ones and twos. How you doing? <sighs> Sounds like he's doing pretty good to me, Case. All right. I, I won't complain. All right. It's my new. It's my new. Th I won't complain. Mm -hmm. I could. I don't want to say I can't. Won't. But I won't. Keep All going. Right. You're pretty much complaining. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so we're gonna do this in a PPR full point setting. Obviously, Dynasty will probably use uh, Superflex for the most part when we're talking about kind of where these guys go. But and then probably make some references to one quarterback maybe throughout here. But. Typically, when we're referring to the spots where these guys go in drafts, we're going to be talking uh, more super flex and typically tight end premium uh, ADP. So just keep that in mind as we're talking about maybe where guys are going in mocks and, and when we're ranking these guys, because that's going to be an integral part of kind of what we're doing. This is going to be on a sliding scale. Um, integral. Uh, because that's the way it should be. It's it's dynasty fantasy football. Like you can't just go down here and just it's list fluid. off guys. There's, there's, you know, points, counterpoints team building all that kind of stuff flows into how to draft and, homemade and narratives kind of what to do that's right it's, it's fluid um so uh let's get going but before we do be sure to rate review and subscribe give me those five stars I'm, i i see the thousands of downloads on the podcast and we don't have thousands of reviews so yeah some of y'all are shortchanging us let's <laughs> let's get that going you can go to revelrybrewingco.com and get a free or get a free tea yeah, it's not quite free, uh, but you can go <laughs> go support the team. Get get you a, a t shirt. We have um, not raised our prices after inflation, so no, no. And you can uh, <laughs> you can of course go to the patreon.com backslash the FF Dynasty and get some more content over there. Um, and just go ahead and support the team some more over there. If you're not support interested in a shirt, you're not interested in Patreon, just give me the subscribe and the review. And if you do hit me with that five star review on either iTunes or podcast send us a screenshot that you did it send it to the FF dynasty at gmail.com or Twitter DM Instagram DM probably not going to see that Facebook DM because Facebook sucks you but can, you can catch Jason at uh, Jason W at grinder on the grinder app you can, that's that's where he's going to spend that's, most of his time I don't time. even know what that is well, me neither but he's probably swiping right <laughs> Uh, I'm going to give away a t-shirt. I'm just going to give it away. I'm going to take like, well, I'll let it run for two weeks. So for the next two weeks, all the people that sent us proof that you gave us a five star, I'm going to enter you into a contest, ra randomly pick a winner and send you a motherfucking t-shirt. I'm like just going to do that for the rest of my life. Every Let's two weeks. Go. Every two weeks. So they stop coming in. And yep. And if you've already given us a five star. The, way just, the viewership's going up. They ain't stopping anytime soon. <laughs> send me proof you already did it. We're, we're obviously trying to get more new ones. Pick but a different platform. Yeah, pick a different platform. I don't Good really call, know that you can really get. If go you to can, Spotify. Spotify and whatever, iTunes. I know you can you do got. five stars. That's the ones I really care about. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't listen to us on that, go over to one of those platforms and do it. Uh if there's another platform that gives five stars, you let me know. I'll enter you in. Fuck it. Subscribe on YouTube. Yeah. Throw well, that. Well, if you're not really watching on YouTube, though, I don't really need your subscription. <laughs> yeah, we do. We'll take all the subscriptions we can get. Give me everything you got. and, and You, you send know, in a proof of subscription, get in the free t-shirt giveaway that Jay's paying fuck for. Fuck it. Salty Greg three sixty eight nine. He stopped listening already because this is going too long. Salty Greg. And he's upset that we haven't got to the football. Sixty nine four twenty. So if you don't like that, definitely don't go to Patreon because the preambles are way longer. <laughs> Have a whole thirty minute conversation before we get to anything. No, no, we don't. But in the good old whatever. days, we used to. Well, we'll, I mean, we'll it may happen. Around, it though. may happen. Fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get it moving here. So, white claws or Trulies? Obviously. Uh, I don't know. White Claws all fucking day. Waterloo's, baby. It's Barkley That's a water. soft cider. I need that hard cider. Yeah. That's why he's on Grinder. Okay. <laughs> number one. Number one ranking. T.A. by himself. King Taylor. Number King one. Taylor. Wait, King. Whether you want to go 
tiers, rankings, whatever you want to do, whatever floats your boat, he's going to be your number one. And for me, it's a tier break at num- numero uno. Who's arguing with that? Right. Jonathan Taylor, he's a he's a separate asset class. Right. We're, he we're, is his own asset class in Dynasty Fantasy Football right now. We're excited about that. So um, let's go to the next uh, tier of guys. And starting that tier would probably be um, – you know, you could you could say it's two, you could say it's three, you could say it's five, really. Even I'm I'm gonna go three. Okay, I'm gonna go Najee Swift, and I'm still sticking CMC in there Love because it. if you want to win your league, Love it. you take the chance on CMC. Love it. Um, any anybody have anything different? I'm gonna squeeze Javante Williams in there. Okay, so I'm gonna put four in that tier. Okay, just All right. I mean, I, I think I would. I you want to go rank real quick? You want to go? Well, I mean, why? For, to, it's Javante it's Steelers choice, and when we get to Javante, you can tell me why he's up there. Um, deal, it's really kind of dealer's choice for any of those guys for me. In whatever order you want to take them, um, I'd flip a coin. Sometimes it'd be Najee, sometimes it'd be Swift. Najee, people like to hate on the yards per attempt because it's three point eight. Well, guess what? He gets a ton of volume, and they can say they're giving it to other guys, but who? Who is there that they're giving it to? They didn't add anybody. Nobody likes Benny Snell. He lost some weight. He's looking good. But, I mean, nobody in that backfield is worth a shit. So, yeah, you might take him off the field and he might not snap, play 90% of the snaps. But he's still going to play a lot of snaps, and he's just good at football. You can be mad at the yards per attempt, and maybe he's not as explosive as Jonathan Taylor. But he can catch. He can run. He can score touchdowns. The offense, the additions that they made in the offseason were primarily to the offensive line. You think that's going to get better. Ben wasn't vibing with Matt Canada, who was the OC that came in the last year of Ben's career. So you know he wasn't feeling that. Uh, had the same guy for a long time. Right, right. Um, so, you know, you could say that this offense can't get worse, but, I, you know, it could. You know, the, the Steel, it could be just a train wreck. But most oh, yeah. likely the Steelers organization, as l- much unlike what Swift is dealing with, where that organization has just been poor, you know, this dealer, Tomlin's never had a losing record, uh, you know, he, so it's solid stat, right? Straight facts. Um, so, you know, and then, you know, more straight facts is, is, you know, Najee in the elusive rating for PFF. Um, I believe he was sixth at 71.8. So that's pretty decent. You can say that's a silly stat, uh, whatever, but second in attempts with 307, um, third yards, yards after, after contact, contact. Uh, tied for third for most missed tackles forced. You can mm. say that's a trash stat if you want, but fifth in 10-plus rushes, 10-plus uh, yard rushes. So, you know, that's pretty decent. Um, and then, you know, 19th in yards per attempt, 3.9. So you don't like to see that. But RB3 overall as a rookie, a little old for a rookie. So if you want to hold that against him, you can hold that against him. Uh, 18.2 points a game. I mean, yeah. maybe, the, maybe the catches go down a little bit because Ben's not dumping it down, but maybe the quality of things increase because everybody's not creeping down on the offensive line because they know it's not just two-yard passes. Um, we don't exactly know what Mitchell is going to do if he's in, in control, and maybe it's Mitchell for half the season and Pickett for half the yep. season. I don't know, but I think Najee is going to be fine in this whole scenario. So I like, I like Najee's floor because it's a, it's a – from a running back, it, it's I'm gonna tie it back to Tomlin's never had a losing record. Mm-hmm. What does that actually mean for a running back that has only been there one year of Tomlin's what 15 year career here? Yeah. No losing records. That means competitiveness, right? Right. That means a team is gonna bring it each and every week. And for your running back, that's huge. If a team folds up, the first person that stops scoring points is a running back, right? And you, sure, Ben fed Najee. He Ben was like, I'm like 90 years old out here. I'm not trying to get hit all the time. I'm not, I'm not old Ben anymore. I'm gonna dump it to Harris. I agree. I think the, I think the ceiling comes down. I I think the ceiling comes down a little bit for Harris. I agree with you that he probably gets less. Most likely gets gets less targets. Sure. I mean, um, 94 targets. Right. A, he, he's he's probably getting less targets. But who are they, who else are they going to throw to? Well, just, I think in I mean? general, like, the running back position just, don't just gets know. less targets. Like, yeah, exactly. You just don't know how those other those young quarterbacks between Mitch not being as young, but you don't know how they're going to play it. And I think, but I think his floor is safe because he can catch. He can be the safety valve as long as the quarterback can can get it to him. And I. Tomlin and Tomlin, we trust for competitiveness. Exactly what those quarterbacks need. The right. dump off. You, you, you pass it to him two times. You have a first down. Right. Like I went back and watched him Najee because I wanted to come in here and be like, I want to take Swift second. And then I went back and watched him Najee, and I'm like, dude, 
That guy, I don't know what's what where he ranks on your MD stat, but that fucking guy just moves different for a guy his size. Like he's will, incredibly athletic. I wish I could find the stat when we did his final rookie report. I couldn't. I didn't go back and. and I know. I meant watch to do it, it too. I'll throw it up on the screen for those watching. There's YouTube. some stat that I found when we were doing the final rookie report that was basically saying that like he's like was like the best ever at basically you know yards that he had to create behind the line of scrimmage before being, before contacted. being contacted and all this other kind of, I forget what it was, but it was fantastic. It was true to roof. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, obviously maybe what the worst part of last year was maybe Ben and maybe that offensive line, hopefully the offensive line got better. And I would say the quarterback is probably sort of a wash. Yeah. Rhea, it's just the only thing I, I you get a while you get a veteran in the, there so you can't the the veteran of all veterans right. you know being Ben just maybe his his obviously his physical abilities weren't there but his mental ability right. you're not going to have that with right. the his it's approach a, his you, composure you, his maybe his the wash sadness. comes in with Pickett's obviously much more uh, physically able than Big Ben at this point, it just because Pickett brings you a little bit both, of both athletic. Mitchell if, and if Mitchell, Pickett. Mitchell looked really good as freshman, his, his rookie year running around, and then he hurt his shoulder, and then the bottom, the wheels fell off with the whole thing. I mean, so Mitchell is underrated athlete. Pickett is an athlete. Big Ben used to be an athlete, athlete, right. not anymore. Um, I, I, have, I would have no problems taking Swift over Harris. That all being said, I mean, a lot has been. Yeah. I mean. Just the number 23 versus 24 looks great in the age category. Sure. Especially for running backs, it looks great. Swift did nothing but gobble up catches himself last year until he got hurt. Yes. Um, Swift had, had uh, 76 targets on 62 receptions and only played 12 games. 13, but that 12, game. Th- 13 or 12 games. Right. So that if he if he plays, he probably has just as many. He, has, he, he might have more targets than Najee if he but, plays. But less than half, basically half the attempts. Of rushing attempts, right, right, and he and and couldn't hold up with that. You know, had a had a only played thirteen games in both his first two years in the league, twenty and twenty one. AC sprain, AC joint sprain, missed four games this last year. Concussion, missed three games in twenty twenty. Just just a smaller frame can't really. You know, he's re- leaning on that PPR. He needs that. He's not going to get anywhere near three hundred carries. I don't believe. Which Najee is probably a lock for 300 carries. He's going to be leading the league in attempts. So, like, close. I get the year, and 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 Swift busts off some runs. I mean, he's ex- explosive, yep. but but Najee can be too. Like, there's runs where he's got a head of steam, and like he can get the edge. And even if you catch him, he's going to drive your head into the ground or fucking hurdle you. So, like, he's incredible and makes ridiculous like one handed catches. Swift too. I was ready to go Swift, and then I watched. I just went back and watched more Harrison. I'm like. That is a fucking man. That is a fucking beast. And he can take 300 carries and all the catches that you can throw at him. He oh, doesn't yeah. need all those catches. Yeah, and Swift needs that shit. Conversely, between the two guys, it's you got one guy with, with you know, we don't know what Jared Goff is, but we know he can run an offense. Right. The offensive line is probably one of the best in the league for the Lions or projected to be. Um, so, you know, but... You know, big difference between what the Steelers have going on up front and quarterback wise. You at least have a savvy veteran in there in Goff, who you may hate on him, but I mean, I think he can operate the offense. He might make a bonehead play or two that costs you the game, maybe, but I think fantasy purposes, he can facilitate an offense. And that offense around Swift is really good. You got Hawk, you got Chark, you got Jameson Williams that they brought in, you got St. Brown. You got Swift. You got uh, another running back in uh, Jamal, Jamal Williams, Williams, which you know probably splits some carries. Which again, kind of goes in my Najee category. Is there's really nobody in the league that is besides maybe JT, and if Najee or if if Naheem creeps back into the mix a little bit, like there isn't that many players who just get the lion share of everything. Whereas CMC is one of those guys, and Najee's one of those guys, and JT's one of those guys, which makes you feel safe. We but, talk. Yeah, we talked about it last year with Tomlin. He wants his bell cow. Right. He, right. That's that's how he plays. That's how that's his mindset. That's his. They didn't have it. They didn't like it, so they went out and did something about it. And First round. They fed him. Yep. They did. They went and were like, "Fuck this. Watch this." Yeah. Um. So, but you know, Swift, seventy six targets on sixty two receptions. Uh, Eckler had eighty eight for seventy playing most of the year. Mm-hmm. Um. You know. So, or eighty eight uh targets to to seventy receptions. Um, averaging a, a two point five five. Um. Yards per route ran, I believe. And then uh, Swift is at a 1.44 yards per route run, which is pretty good. CPAT, 63 targets on 52. He's the only other guys close to him. 
Uh, Cordero Patterson with 63 targets on 52 catches uh, with a 2.24 yards per route run, and Alvin Kamara 65 and 47 catches. Uh, so those guys are all the you know premier pass catching running backs in the league. Maybe we see Dalvin up there this year sure. uh, with what they're talking about. Uh, but you know. AK missed some time. CPAP missed a little bit of time, but Eckler and CPAP played a decent amount of games where Swift missed some games, and the, that target is ridiculous. Now, that may come down as well because you would assume Hawkinson's healthy, and they brought Chark in. And Jameson. And Jameson, he, may, he might miss some time, but mm -hmm. then uh, also St. Brown really Saint emerged. Brown didn't get any targets right. until later on in the season, any real targets. Right. So fun. that's a fun offense too. So I flip a coin. I don't really care. If I did 10 drafts, I'd probably go five Najee. Five Swift, um, and then uh, pretty much always drafting CMC behind those guys just because of the youth. Uh, but but I got him in there because if he scores, if I'm I had no problem taking CMC. I'm playing to win, and he's still young enough that if he gets out there and plays three more elite seasons, that's oh that's, sure that's I'll money in that. the bank. Because it I mean the if you got three elite seasons out of McCaffrey, it's the elite of the elite. Right. Um, I heard something on the radio and Marshall Falk. Uh, and I, it was made up, you know, it hit, it hit the news, it hit Roto wire or whatever, Roto world, something that McCaffrey and Falk had been talking, but somebody had them on the radio and it was like, what were y'all talking about? And Falk said, when I was in my prime, I didn't necessarily look like a football player. I was doing yoga and, you know, McCaffrey got all beefed up jacked year or two 18 months ago whatever every off and season he puts on like extra five and ten on. pounds of muscle because he's a beast that's all you know he's he Good jeans he, he Strong wants levi's it. great jeans he Jean wants coach. it marshall falk said yo stretch out you don't need the weights elasticity bro oh yeah, yeah just go do some yoga and some pilates don't play in the and, preseason uh, don't play in the preseason so i, I can't I, I can't wait i hope man i just i really hope to see some more um peak healthy McCaffrey before before the before the candle goes out because he's he's so good he's so fun to watch also Marshall Falk had some injuries right around that time and missed a chunk of time and then came back and beasted for the, the next dude Marshall Falk went he, he claimed his Marshall Falk was a beast Indianapolis cult right and then he became a hall of famer on the, the Rams, Rams yeah at the same age right now that McCaffrey right. is right so there's a lot left potentially I know he's, he's made a glass though so don't draft him I'll keep taking him so why is why is, is is why is Javante in this tier for you? He'd be in the next tier for me. So, you know, we've been doing mocks all off season on Patreon. Christian McCaffrey right there, overall four, uh, sleeper ADP. They got him at, at RB four, uh, but they got Javante up at RB three. Now none of that has anything to do with why I want him up there. But basically, it's it's pretty simple. I mean, he's a safe asset, right? Javante Williams isn't going to do anything this year, probably to hurt his stock. If they hadn't re-signed Melvin, he'd be a first round pick right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Russell coming in makes it very appealing to take Javante Williams. Um, sure. Crushed it in the receiving game. You know, with the amount of snaps that he played, Melvin with Melvin being there, you know, 57 targets, 43 receptions. That's 15 more than Melvin had. They they were you know, and when they did feature him, he was awesome. I think the only time he got 20 carries, he scored 29 fantasy points. Got these stats from Casey right eighth in yards after contact, second in missed forced tackles, and only 203 attempts. Like it can only go up. I feel like the attempts, he's probably going to take the reins here. Maybe it's not as good for a year because you have mm -hmm. Melvin, yeah, but sure. he's 22 years old. Like right. He just turned 22, and people love him. He's a little bit of a value because of Melvin, and like if CMC gets hurt again, you know, I don't know. This, CMC can't really get any higher, right? Javante still has room to go. Now, CMC would not be surprised if he has a better season this year. Plenty of guys on this list that I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised surprising if they had CMC a better, year, had a better year. year for three years if he if he stays healthy. He's the best back in the league if he's number one if he's healthy. That's why he's there. But doesn't Williams, matter that he can't go any higher. He's, but he's point, proven that he's the best player. The difference between those two guys are that Javante hasn't quite proven and, that he's the best player. Well, and that'd be Javante my biggest question. Been out, he hadn't I'm caught not, twelve I'm, passes a game I'm for not, five right, games in a row. Right. And Javante's but he's still never, twenty-two. Right. Javante's never actually carried a workload like in college. He had 43 attempts his first year, 166 his second, and 157. That's 366 total attempts with 50 total receptions. Like, CMC does that it's in like one year. One year for JT. Right. right. 
And, and, and he so, did it in college too. Yeah. So can he actually handle the workload? And and you know he's not as heavy as people give him credit as people give him credit for. But I mean, watching him, he looks like a monster when he's out there, and he has juice yeah, and burst. I like him a and, lot for sure. Um, RB fifteen on the year, twenty uh, fourth in points per game, twelve point three. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 I basically he's four years younger than Christian McCaffrey. That's, yeah, that's why I got to probably take him over him. Yeah. Wow. He was, he was. RB fifteen on the year is that what you said? Mm-hmm. And twenty fourth in points per game. Right. That's how. I mean, that's the crazy part of if you can get a running back that plays every week. Right. Played all seventeen games. So he, yep. he the, the the target. I don't have the share percentage between it, but the targets are fifty three to thirty nine between him and Melvin, and forty three catches to twenty eight catches. So probably and each be, had exactly two hundred three attempts. Probably be leaning a little bit more towards your receiving back for him. Melvin still looked good. That's probably gonna you know wash out a little bit of the greatness of what could be for Javante. So that's why I probably have him down, just bumped down a hair and on the next tier uh, for me. And the, he's got the, the 10 plus yard runs. He's got 25 of those. That's good for seventh only on those 203 attempts. So that's really strong. Uh, design runs with 15 yards or more. That's nine. So that's tied for 10th, both good uh, stats there for the amount of work that he was getting. Um, and then second in that elusive rating that we talked about with Najee, uh, which you know basically classifies as a stat measuring success and impact of a runner with the ball independently of his blocking. Um, so uh, a lot of a lot of good stuff to to like with um, with Javante Williams. I, I would I'd put him down in the next tier and I'd put Brees Hall right there with him. Um, both uh, just good profiles, good young dudes uh, that that haven't quite ascended to being in the top with those other guys and next year you know this list could flip and be shit one week into the right season on the, Brees right could on be the other this, side of this could um, jump up into that so could be so could williams so could williams right um so you know it's we're Brees, have, i think actually probably profiles better for sure than javante 100 russell wilson um, so for me i'd put javante and Brees in the next tier down and then that would be a tier break uh for me it's Brees has got the great profile coming in got the capital Going to the Jets. We don't exactly know what's going to happen between him and Michael Carter. Michael Carter was pretty good last year. Uh, I'm sure Michael Carter will still be in the mix, but Brees, good receiving back. Uh, they want to lean on the run game. That Niners tree uh, kind of getting uh, with, with LaFleur being attached to that. Sala being attached to that. Uh, I'm sure they want to get a run game going. All they've been doing is working on the trenches. That's a Joe Douglas specialty. He likes to improve from the inside out. Uh, so I, I like where they're going. It's, it's, can Zach Williams or Zach, uh, Zach Wilson – uh, be the maestro and and get him there, or are they going to say we're going to lean on Brees? That's why we took him, and we'll we'll let we'll bring Zach along, and you know let Brees hold his hand. Lean on Brees, um, and Let's do you know, it if they can get Makai Becton back and and operating uh, where he needs to be. That he he's showed you early on that he's a, one of the best in the game. It's sad that you missed him uh, for most of last year, uh, but uh, they've been improving on that line week in or uh, year in year out. So like where that's heading i like the javante tied to russell on the broncos it wasn't nearly as fun with without a quarterback it's a lot more fun now it's just less fun because they signed melvin to a year melvin looked like he still had some juice that's really yeah it. he definitely did melvin um, look melvin looked just fine i i, I can I, I would lean towards your direction on that just uh jay uh casey with the williams javante being a little bit lower than the harris swift mccaffrey just on the proven usage um and just like Jay said, week one, Williams comes out and has 25 fantasy points. All yeah. of a sudden, he's one somebody that everybody can't stop salivating over. Brees Hall comes out and has 80 yards and uh, touchdown and six catches, and all of a sudden he's in the top half of the first round yeah. startup drafts. You know, the both the, assets that I want. Sure, absolutely. Got to get one of these guys we're, we've we're, just talked we've about. We've gone man. through one. Seven guys so far, six guys so far. Six. Um, so you know, I want all those guys, of course, um, for sure, on my team. And then we're getting into the next tier, which for me would probably be Barkley Mixon. You got a little age jump here. That's you know, you right. get. That's why you had the break after Brees Hall and Javante Williams because right. you had the you had the youth. Um, I don't think uh, it would. I don't think anybody's going to argue that Mixon, Barkley, Eckler, and Dalvin Cook could easily have better and nick chubb in there too sands the catches uh that could have better seasons than Brees hall and javante williams wouldn't surprise anybody Mm-mm. they're just four years older right you know um so you know 
to me, uh, Mixon feels a little safer than Barkley because sure. he Barkley had the ACL and his ankle got the size of Texas. It, it could be, you know, Barkley could roll. Mixon's paid. Yeah. Barkley not so much. Barkley could I could see you could make my homemade narrative that Barkley's going to be hungrier. He didn't get the extension. He doesn't yeah, he, have the he's big. Paid. It, he's did paid. Barclay, up. Did Park, I don't, Barclay? Did Barkley doesn't have that new? Big oh no, contract. Barkley's not. Barkley's yeah, not. Mixon, 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 yeah, yeah, that's Mixon's what I mean. Been paid, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my homemade narrative is Barkley's hungrier than Mixon. Yeah, he had the injury. Also, have nobody else back there. True, but like he, you know, Mixon's. No, paid. I'm saying as far as like, yeah, I agree with you. Mixon's paid up. Barkley not. Barkley needs that contract. Them boys got. Uh, Corbin, who was a rookie, was super late draft, or maybe even a free agent picks up, and they got and Gary Matt, Brightwell Matt Breida. and Matt Breida. Yeah, like, that's who they got. Like, yeah, I mean, you take Mark, you take Barkley, and you take a Matt Breida in the twentieth round. That's an easy gimme, right? Um, um, so I, I, I basically have them in the same tier for sort of what you preference there. It's I like both of them. I'm putting them in a tier together. You, you can kind of have dealer's choice here of the safety with Mixon. Again, right. they've been improving that line. Great and, offense, and now that is, and, and the offense around him, Joe's great, and they got three great receivers. Yeah, um, and they picked up Hayden Hurst, uh, who's I believe a pretty good blocker. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you know, we'll see what happens there, but um, you know, and then they've improved the offensive line. They they, they went and targeted that and got Joe uh, some free agent pickups throughout the off season and drafted some guys in the year before that. Um, so that offensive line should, which was a weak spot for them, should be coming around. Mixon was. Uh, RB4 last year, still young, paid up. Um, so And crushes the stats if that's right. what you're into. I mean, yards after contact, 6th and 5th respectively in 10 and 15-yard runs, 10th and missed force tackles, just, just crushing the stats that you want to see. Plus, that offense is unstoppable. I mean, I went back because we're going to talk about Derrick Henry. I wanted to see what those 20 attempts looked like coming back after that foot injury and they were playing the Bengals in the playoffs and, like, I wanted to just fast forward to find Derrick Henry, but I had to watch the Bengals' offense operate. It was unbelievable, yeah, you know. Yeah. And he's 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 been paid. He's there. Like it just seems pretty safe. Only twenty five years old. Two hundred ninety two attempts. No, he's twenty six. Just turned. He'll, he'll be twenty six by the time this video drops. Two hundred ninety two attempts. So a, a big amount of, of attempts there for him out of three hundred twenty seven snaps. You know they got Chris Evans and Samaje there, but no real threat to to take. You know, too, too much away from him. Um, you know, enough targets, 47 and 42 receptions. Uh, so, you know, those are all good things. 12th and breakaway percentage, uh, 21.2% there. Uh, not great in the elusive uh, stat category. Uh, 21st, 44.5, but uh, it doesn't really matter. You just use that stat when it fits your narrative. Just right. like pretty much any other stat. So you're rolling Mix and Barkley. You got a tier there. Just I, I tier break that there. Is that and just because Eckler and Cook are a little bit older? Right. So this is this is to me where the running back discussion kind of begins. Right. So and, and we got one more bump for Barkley. Right. Was that offensive line that they've worked right. on this offseason getting Dable in there? Because I want to make the argument for mixing over Barkley because of the situation. But you know things are looking up for Barkley. Should be healthy. Freak injury uh, last year after coming off an ACL, MCL, and meniscus tear in twenty two which or twenty twenty, which is pretty serious. Low ankle sprain in week five, misses which, four games, which was a freak accident. Right. That one's like. Well, right, that was the most ridiculous injury ever. Like Dable, Dable comes in there. Everyone loves Dable. They had the 30th ranked PFF line in 21. They got rid of everybody but one starter. They brought in three new guys: uh, Douglas, Lewinsky, and Fel- Feliciano. All those boys have experience in uh, Dable's Dable's system. They drafted uh, Keanu. Uh, what is it? Evan Neal Evan from Neal. Alabama yeah. and two other rookie linemen. So they just completely they have, revamped they got that Henderson, offensive line. Uh, from two years ago in the draft, who has been been kind of coming along, he's pretty strong. Um, could be pretty strong. Um, so that he was a fairly high draft pick. So that that line should be a little improved. Dayball system should be better. Uh, Daniel Jones's approach to the game should be a little bit better. The offense as a whole should be a little bit better. The team chemistry should be all a little bit better. Um, all all things pointing in a in a decent direction. And again, nobody behind Barkley. So right. Barkley's the guy that I'm you know in the third round of superflex startups when you know that's the last last kind of running back available. That's why there's a tier break mm-hmm. here for me, and it's Mixon or Brees or Mixon or Saquon. Like 
I love the upside of Saquon. It's kind of getting a value on him. Next year, he could be up in that CMC tier if he, if he bounces back to where he, the 90 catch season that he had as a rookie. Right. Um, so that, that, that name cachet, people do like him. They want him to be good. He, don't, he did play 13 games last year and only was RB32 and averaged 10.8 points a game, which was 35th. So that leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. So he's actually a value right now, like a target for people. Because I'm, like, I'm down to draft this dude. We have him ranked at like, where is this? Uh, where do we have this ranking? Big Co, you looking at it? Is it nine, eight? Uh, you got him at eight. Eight, right. Yep. So we got him ranked eight. He's on sleeper. He's RB13. And in right. our mocks, he's RB10. But that's because we've been kind of bumping that up along with Foreman, who Penn State guy really want, really into Saquon. Sure. So he, he's, yeah. he's a value, a guy that actually hangs around that's, that's like exciting to take that particular running back in these drafts, which, when we're, like you said, we're about to break this discussion off into a completely different type of narrative where – might not be targeting those guys, but these first yeah. eight guys here, I got to get one of these guys. I'd love to get two, but in super flex, it's hard to get two of those because you want to be getting quarterbacks, and if it's tight end premium and you want to squeeze a little pits or Mark Andrews in there, I get it. You know, but but it's hard to get. It's hard to go super running back heavy. But if you can get one of those top eight guys, and maybe Saquon falls, and you get a, a really good quarterback and and one of the top six and Saquon, that's fantastic. <coughs> You're setting yourself up pretty good. Um, yeah, so, so I just want to make that last point about Saquon. I, I agree, and you know we got the. For me, it's a it's a top eight. I want to. I definitely want to get one of those guys. Like you said, it, it's pretty hard to get two of those guys in in superflex. Even sometimes one quarterback, depending on how the board falls. And now we're going to kind of get into a little bit different discussion because it gets into you know the Eckler, the Cook, the Chubb, the Et, the Dobbins, the Acres, the Jacobs, the Gibson, the Monty. Pretty much, it's it's either a bunch of older guys with experience who are good, a bunch of unproven guys, and a bunch of guys kind of in the middle, the Jacobs, the Montes, the Gibsons, who haven't quite ascended to being the great guys that we wanted them to be. And then you have Dobbins and, and Akers who coming off big injuries. Uh, yeah. So, you know, for me, this is kind of a big line of demarcation, and this would be like where, you know, typically I'd be, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I like to go robust on running back. I like to get a lot of running backs, but... That the, the, we, the way, we used to be a running back show. The that way was, that this draft sets up, and the way that it set it up last year, it it's it's really really hard to execute that strategy, and you, it, you don't want to just jam that shit in there because you want to get some running backs. That's ridiculous. You can't do that. You're gonna end up with a team of dudes who, in two years, you could be looking around and you ain't got no running backs. Right. Um, so that's that's kind of where this discussion. You got to play it as the board falls. Last year, I kind of was off getting it because the board wasn't falling that way. This year, you kind of can do it. I think for me, it's it's definitely trying to get one, and then maybe you get one more through the next uh, 10 guys that we are gonna that we got here. You, which block um, are you looking at, the most recent? I'm just looking. I got them all pulled up okay. just to kind of bounce around. <clears throat> and Big um, Co., if you go to our, super, our, 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 our Patreon mock sheet mm -hmm. the, on the top where it says mock draft, you can click on it. It's a link you can click on to the draft. Nice. So – you know, now now we're going to get into a discussion of those guys. I feel like, you know, the top couple of wide receivers, you're, you're, you can mix, mix it around with those guys, the really high-end ones. You can take them either a little before Taylor or a little after Taylor, whatever, and then you mix it around. And now we get into a conversation where it's, like I said, it's Eckler, Chubb, Cook, and then, you know, E.T., Dobbins, Acres, Kenneth Walker. So this is this is where we really need to start breaking this down, and I, I feel like this is probably the most important area to start adding context to yeah. um, your tiers here. So uh, what are your what are your thoughts on the next guys that you would would kind of target here, and then around like what? Okay, so I'll lay this out this way: Would you take Stephon Diggs over every running back left? I say that's a yes for me. Oh, uh, uh, you, you're under every running back left under, being under under Saquon? under Barkley and Mixon. Yep, that's a good question. I might. I would have to. I could be at any given draft. I could go head to head with him and Etn just because of the perfect upside of Etn. Right there with you. If you put Truth Serum in me right now, yeah, that would be the next running back off the board for me. Would be yeah. Etn, and you're gonna put, some people are gonna like that. It's gonna be crazy, whatever. That's fine. I, I mean, if I'm trying to, if it's you know, if I'm trying to win my win my league, and then to have to figure out what's going on later, I'll probably take Eckler or Cook. 
because that's but i mean if you know the context is who is my first pick or two right where are we at in the draft how am i feeling i like you know my thing is you know again you know jonathan taylor being the asset class that he is these things and i talked about it with the wide receivers mindset when i was talking about Devontae adams and cooper cup like dalvin cook austin eckler that's a mindset thing in the draft juices are flowing there's so everybody's got options you picking your guys but in the week five dalvin cook's team or austin eckler's team so one of those teams i'm gonna be able to get them cheaper than i had to pay for him in the draft right that my, was- the opportunity cost of what i had to do to take dalvin cook who i'd love to have on my team austin eckler the only reason that i'm not like y'all just take by the dip because he's 27 is because what casey said he's not paid and he should hold out when He's Casey, like the thirteenth highest paid running Casey back. When Casey told me that Austin Eckler, the the dots, the money lines up, the pencil and the paper go together. They're about for to Austin, have to sign Herbert. They Austin, ain't about to have a bunch of money laying around for a running back. Austin Eckler's potential should be for I. I like Austin Eckler, and I don't know him. I've never talked to him. I'll never text him. I'll never have his phone number. But I think he should hold out. For you know, sure. I want him to it's get your last chance, Bubba. Do it, buddy. Get, I want him it. to get that paper. Got to. So everybody else is getting that paper. Hold out, Austin Eckler. Herbert's about to get three hundred million. You about you need to get that right, money somehow. Right, 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 right. Or just move in beside him. You know, you can <laughs> ride three hundred million. I can you can ride those coattails. You'd be just fine. But Herbert so, such a, seems like such a good guy. He's definitely gonna take a team friendly. So deal. does Austin Eckler. I know, I know. I'm just you saying, know? like, yeah. So like, I'm I'm a big Austin Eckler guy. But in the draft, I can't pay for him because first of all, he should be holding out. Second of all, when we get out of the draft, I can just buy him with my first round pick next year. This is a hundred percent what most of this conversation was really based upon for me, and which is why ET. Way to jump to the conclusion. Which is why ET is up there. I didn't know the answers to the test. (laughs) Which is why ET is up there for me because it's like I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna take Stephon Diggs instead of taking uh, Eckler and and Cook there Uh, Mm -hmm. because those should probably be the next two guys. If you're really going point scored, well, yada, yada, yada. But I'm going to take Diggs and I'm, you know, in my tier four of wide receivers that we did on the last show, but DJ Moore, Deontay, Drake, Burks, like a lot of Pittman, like I might, I'd probably take a lot of those guys above where I would take Austin Eckler because all those guys are super young and they're probably going to be around. I'm not going to be looking around in a year or two being like, shit. Exactly. Uh, you know, and, and then that, to follow up with all that, it was basically exactly what you said. That's perfect. And that's you. <laughs> there's no reason to draft them. Right. Like there's uh, there's Eckler. There's Cook. There's Zeke. There's AK. There's Aaron Jones. Uh, there's Derrick Henry. There is no way that six teams, however, those guys get divided up, are all going to be went in positions to win. Exactly. Some of those teams are going to be looking around and they're going to be the orphan team in right. two years because they no blew doubt. their load and they don't know what they're doing. And now they're trying to sell whatever asset they can yep. to try to get. You might not even have to pay a first for Austin Eckler. If, and I'm going to be scooping them. Right. And, and one of those teams. We tried to t- sell Dalvin Cook halfway through the season last year for the whole season and nobody would fucking buy him. Right. And, and one of those teams is going to have a couple of those guys and be killing it. Right. But like you said, but then in two years, they're all hugely depreciating assets and they're going to be so like there's there's nothing wrong with the middle aged running back. You just in the startup, I, I, I'm trying to learn a little something every year and you just there's no reason to pay that. You know, a couple of years ago, five years ago now, uh, Casey and I were in this. Uh, thank you very much. Forgot about that uh, computer about to die. Casey and I were in a startup together, and and we threw a couple of uh we threw a couple of running backs on our on our list in the like fourth and fifth round. Doug Martin, Adrian Peterson. Well, it wasn't twelve months down the road. Doug Martin's nowhere to be seen, right? Adrian Peterson was good, but he got Adrian Peterson. I think he got put on the commissioner's list, list yeah. you know, because that's the hour that's our luck with running backs, and it's just you just like Casey took my point. And expounded on it. You take all the Aaron Jones was a great addition to that. Austin Eckler, Aaron Jones, easily the top three running backs this year, right? And, and Both of me, those cats could easily be. Aaron Jones is about to be peppered with targets for sure. So he, he, Aaron Rodgers got nobody else to throw to. Get the cheapest one of those guys on your get team. Get the cheapest one and down. then go buy the and other then, cheapest one after the draft and crush. 100%. Because there's no way that all those guys are going to be on teams that aren't rebuilding. I mean, that are that are that are that are winning, right? And or not rebuilding. There might be one or two that you yep. can't get, get because they're winning. Go get the other ones now. Convert the you know, you know if if you start your team with Cooper Cup and Devontae Adams, 
then shit, maybe you do take Austin Eckler and just say YOLO and then, and, 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 you know, just mix it up from there on out, get some veterans that, you know, are going to score some points and get some youth and just know that the reckoning's coming one day. And at some point you're, you're going <laughs> to have right. to pay the piper, but yeah. it's fucking hard to win. So if yeah. you can get in there and win year one or two, now you got some money stashed away. And you know, if you can, if you can move about your cabin, uh, swiftly, uh, you know, you can, you can rebuild and, and have a nice little, Block down low with, you know, Sky Moores and Watson, Christian Watsons and mm-hmm. uh, Isaiah Spillers and Rashad Whites. And, you know, you can build that Throw little your high younger upside, guys Zemir White. Mm-hmm. and Zamir White and get and, and sprinkle in Allen Robinson and, and uh, whatever the other cheaper vets are down Feeling. the line, uh, you know. And and that's that's all about a team build. That's why this is on a sliding scale. Yep. You can't just come in here and be like, this is hard and fast. Numbers down the page, and these are the guys you have to pick in that order. That doesn't make any sense. Yep, Th- what right. makes sense is grouping these guys up, coming in, and, and going about this smartly. Um, so, you this, know, this was definitely the hardest ranking of order to put anything in. Like, I'm because I'm think I'm like, how am I gonna put these guys in order? I don't know. I don't. And I go back and look at like the mocks that we've done, and I don't think I've taken like any of guys. those guys. I'm taking Waddle, and I'm taking DK. I don't think I've had shots at at Diggs. I'm probably taking a quarterback, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but but Waddle and DK fall to the third round with yeah, some of these guys quarterbacks. There, there's do, absolutely no when way these that running backs do. Hill, Debo, DK, Higgins. If any of those guys are around, there's no way I'm taking Eckler or Cook. Exactly. Right? I was even thinking about it while we were having this. I I have trouble if it's a super flex draft. I have trouble really buying in for the price I have to pay for Harris and Swift. I'm kick, I'm taking a quarterback or navigating my way around that situation because they're they're going so mm-hmm. high. Mm-hmm. That I'm in the Christian McCaffrey, Brees Hall all day in the second I, round it, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a. Just don't feel like my toe needs to go in that water for that price tag, so I'm taking the Dak Prescott. Yeah, just to just to sidestep any potential problems. You know, not that they haven't been fantastic. It's just the price that you have to pay for those guys. Also depends on where you are in that draft and how how it falls. Like, yeah, you know you're pro- you're gonna now. Yeah, if Swift is the first just two there, rounds are gonna be 12, 14 quarterbacks. Yeah, if it's like that, and I if I'm if I'm at pick twelve and you know eleven of my favorite quarterbacks are gone, maybe I'm hammering something right there. But you, if that's the case, then you're gonna end up getting stuck with Justin Fields and Derek Carr on the three four turn. You which, took you took Taylor and Lance in one of these super flexes in your first and second, and then. Lamb goes, Lawrence goes, Stafford goes, and then goes Najee, Javante, Swift. Right. You know, so that's two eight, two nine, two ten. That, I, I, and I passed fun. on all those guys to take Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. So, um, but I like that. So, all right, let's let's get down to brass taxes and, and tear these guys up a little bit. So, obviously, Cook and Eckler are, are probably the two best guys left if you want to win. If if and depending on how that team gets built and how your first two three rounds shake out. If you wanted to put those guys up at the next two guys being taken because you're going veteran heavy, I guess I'm fine with it. But for all the reasons that we just stated, I'm taking ET next. It's it's hard for me to rank ET up there with above those guys because I would have Dalvin and Eckler kind of and and Chubb probably in the next tier there. Um, Dalvin being RB nine. Does Eckler, Chubb get any love for being one year younger than all those guys? For sure, I think we gotta. I think we definitely got to address Chubb having a deserving spot in this tier with. Full year younger than I'm him. looking forward to drafting Chubb in like the fifth round of a right. draft. The the one the one startup this year where he just just drops to pick sixty. I'm t- I'm going to gobble him up, but I can't go take Chubb over an ETN right, right. now. He's, no. he's three years younger, and ETN's got a chance to catch sixty passes, and Chubb could only dream about that. Now there also is a pretty big list of people not being able to make it back from a Liz Frank injury. Uh, that's a good point. It, and it's, a, it's a weird injury. It's it's it is, it's rare. And there's there's a Twitter thread you can look at where he goes into all the dudes and like the, and, and the only guys that really made it back from him were the ones that had strains and not full fractures where they needed surgery, which he his was was needed to be surgically repaired. Now he's really young. He's a, he's got an amazing work ethic. So I know he's going to be doing everything he needs to do. You watch an interview with him. He says he's at full speed. He says he doesn't feel it. He looks like he's back. That's, you know, well, we'll see, you know, and, and, and Jags offense, it's hard for me to come in here and be like, you need to take him over Eckler or Cook that are going to get you two potential league winning Good players point. for the next two years. You know, it's hard. And I'm a Clemson fan. I want to do that. And so. I'm taking ET. I don't care. 
Doesn't matter to me. I think he's coming back from a Liz Frank. All those other lists were probably a bunch of bum ass dudes. And <laughs> this this dude's an elite elite human being. Medicine's at a different spot where whether that's ever been. Um, it you know, sure is. I'm 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 more concerned about you know Dobbins right now not being at full speed than Etn being at full speed. Yeah, that, that, that concerns me more than. To, for, I mean, that's 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 as about as good as it gets. One side of the coin to the other. Jay Wayne throws a cold water on a Clemson Tiger about Liz Frank. And then Casey no goes, Casey goes, well, Cam Akers came back off of an Achilles blowout three weeks later because where medicine and science is right now. Now, so Achilles is a little bit more of a, of a injury that happens. Right. And so, and, and looking into Cam Akers, like, uh, the same surgeon repaired Kobe Bryant's Achilles did his, um, it was a, they had quick, they had surgery really quick after the injury. So the longer you wait, the worse that gets. And then there's been a lot of advances in sports science for the rehab of an Achilles tendon. So and they talked about Cam Akers' work ethic being like a tremendous dude grinding all the time. Like we're never even talking to the media about it. Just went to work, and they're really impressed with him. And and he made it back in six months, which is pretty record time. Right. Uh, didn't look great but made it back probably shouldn't have played but yeah. uh seems didn't re-injure it you know so first achilles i'm like ah people they say you'd rather have an acl than achilles which oh, jk yeah. dobbins it was all of them right it was it was uh acl, ACL damage to the lcl and meniscus so that was the trifecta that's a pretty bump big bummer um and the fact that he's still not up to full speed although he does say him and jesus are working on getting back to the big stage so if, if jesus is going to be helping him out hey i think that's that's can't hurt he wasn't yeah. feeling what rapaport was saying not so. a better shotgun rider yeah uh <laughs> so i mean but he could take the wheel so to take it back take it back to the we hit chubb and chubb's never had a deshaun watson right in and his that's corner the thing, right and I, that's why i would like to play out this because because you know you can make the argument that chubb doesn't get the receptions right. He he, he only had twenty receive only twenty receptions, twenty five targets. That's but the only knock you can come up with. Chubb, Chubb, well, he's might like the, be the best, best running run, back. He might in be the, the best game. running zero drops runner. out of those though. <laughs> might zero be the best drop. pure runner in the game, but he's never had a he's never had a Deshaun Watson to help his his team. I don't even get know if he's might. He is. He's the best pure runner in the game. There you go. Like, the, so, the stats back that up for sure. I mean, yeah, he's an absolute stud. So you he, now you give him. He's got three years on that deal. Now you give him Watson. He's got three years on that deal. Maybe you don't get Watson for for half a season this year. Maybe it's a full season, but that's still two more years. It's going to ride Chubb into his sunset of the twilight of his career. It's going to be a great offensive line. Going to be, uh, you know, good, good solid defense. Uh, you know, just a solid all around team. And you know, we Kareem Hunt's got one more year. We don't know what's going to happen there. Chubb can catch, but it's like even even still. I and mean, when he does, it's fucking awesome. Right. They RB, should throw him the ball some more. RB thir- thirteen games, RB eleven uh, points per game, RB 12, 16, just absolutely slated. Two hundred twenty eight attempts, twelve hundred fifty eight yards, five point one five point five yards <sighs> per attempt. That's, That's tied for a, number one. It's a YPA right um, there, baby. Zero drops, number one in elusive rating by a long shot, one hundred seven point seven. Um, third and and runs with fifteen yards. Breakaway percentage third, thirty six percent. Missed tackles force fifty seven yards after contact. 697 that's good for second yards per contact per attempt 4.24 that's number one next close is a jt 3.83 yeah so so. just smoking those dudes so best runner in the game there's he like i completely agree they should throw it to him more maybe watson checks it down to him because he's an elite quarterback and he's like yo this is way uh, i'm not why well, force it down there and toss it to this guy that nobody can tackle maybe he gets a couple more checks downs because the maybe, watson's smart enough to do that maybe a few more long ones but, too because he busts off the explosive play and this defense is going to be stressed with Deshaun Watson and the Adamari Cooper they haven't had an offense this good I don't I think I like also it. feel like you kind of I mean you can create the narrative for either side of this Brissett comes in they lean on the run game a little more Chubb gets a little more heavy usage Watson comes in the opportunities go up the touchdown opportunities go running up. lanes get everything, bigger. everything gets a little bigger so Scoring I feel like you're not really losing on either <laughs> side necessarily where Chubb could still do Chubb things and, uh, and you know with the, with the allure of Watson's coming back. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Ooh, almost had you. Yeah, so I, I'm I, I like buying the dip on Nick Chubb because it's getting cheaper and cheaper by the day. But it's still it's the same thing. You're not taking him up above some of these other younger guys and no. some of these receivers. You're waiting until it comes. He's cheap. He's one of the he's the, one of the cheaper elites, and he hangs around. Oh, he's so probably I'm fine give you with the that. best. Bang give me all for the, the Chubb I can get, but it's just like where the hell do you rank him? 
I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm probably going ET, and I'm probably taking Kenneth Walker next after that. <laughs> Yeah, I got. I know nobody likes either one of those two, but I don't even care. Kenneth Walker's a bona fide stud. Penny's there for one more year. They drafted him high. They know they want to run the shit out of the ball. I don't care if you don't think he can catch. That's ridiculous. He well, absolutely can catch. The only person with a worse care target share than him was Doesn't Nick matter. Chubb. Nick Chubb had a worse target right. share than him coming out of college, and he's not catching a lot of balls. But they got Kareem Hunt there. But he's a fucking filthy running back, which so is Kenneth Walker. Like. Yeah, I'm, so I'm See, it I, takes, gonna, gonna be a bummer maybe for this year because you might only you might split temps with Penny and maybe you take it over. I think he could be rookie of the year, uh, you know. But I'm maybe I'm taking, that offense I'm isn't Walker. that good. They Take got questionable Fuck it. QBs. Uh, the, uh, Kenneth Walker, you know, hey, they, they, nobody says he can catch. Yada yada yada. Those types of guys, it takes a Tom Brady to throw it to Leonard Fournette sixty five times. Just what I was talking about, Watson being smart enough to throw it to Chubb. Yeah. Right? Leonard Fournette was never catching balls. He was never going to be Christian McCaffrey. Nobody, nobody ever. DeAndre Swift came in catching balls. Harris came in catching balls. You either are a pass catching running back or you're not. And it takes a quarterback with elite awareness, game thought process. Hey, I, why in the world am I going to make this harder on myself? Let me give it to the best athlete on the field. Right. You know, one of the best athletes. So, Kenneth Walker probably not going to be running around fresh rookie season with a high end quarterback throwing him the ball, but it just we just saw it happen with Leonard playoff Lenny, Tom Brady and Lenny get together, and Tom Brady's like, "Watch this." Lenny's like third in the league and yeah catches exactly, and 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 Brady leads the league in passes and touchdown passes and yardage while throwing it to Lenny Fournette all the time as well because he just made the game easier on everybody. Right. I don't you know, so Kenny Kenny Walker, you can say he can't catch passes. If he gets hooked up with the right quarterback, he's gonna get pass, catch passes because quarterbacks that are really good are smart enough to throw it to the running back. It's basically what I was right, saying. Right. And you and you just saw it with Leonard Fournette and, and Tom Brady. So I'm having a real hard time ranking putting Chubb, Eckler, and Cook in. Like I guess I could slide him in kind of right here now. If it, it but I'm probably e. T. And th there's a caveat Kenneth of I'm Walker. taking all these I'm taking Diggs, Hill, Debo, DK, Higgins, DJ Moore, Deontay, probably Drake and Burks over all those guys. Over them and, and maybe even Godwin, Terry, and Pittman. And see the um, and the beauty of it is is there's guys uh, those those running backs are going to get drafted right in the middle of those wide receivers while you're drafting safer assets. Right. And then once we figure it out on the field through three weeks, you go pick up one or two, like we talked about, you go pick up one or two of those guys exactly. as you can. That's why I'm ranking them lower because I'm still going to try to go get them if I'm winning. Right. So I think it's I think it's fair to rank them up higher. But, uh, you know, I want to add the word target to the title of this video like targets right we've been telling you who the targets are that we're going after and, and like et and kenneth walker are absolutely targets for me in a startup draft because they're going after eckler cook henry chubb kamara acres right you can you can pass on those guys get your elite young stud wide receiver and then target them boys after that right and 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 they're players who we really want over those other guys when it comes to dynasty fantasy football so Targets, baby. Etienne and Kenneth Walker. I really want to put Dobbins and Acres next because there's the talents there, the situations there. We're just there's just a, a a little bit of a yeah, but right there. But I guess they they kind of slot in Walker, Et, Dobbins, Acres for me. What do you what do you think? I would have Et and Walker in a team right. by e themselves. Et Walker, yeah, and then Dobbins, Acres, and then I would have. I would have Dobbins and Acres in the tier with Gibson and Monty, but I'd rather have Gibson and Monty. I got I got Monty, Gibson, Jacobs all together. So I, I, was, I got Monty and Gibson in the tier with Acres and JK. I could I could put and above I, them. I'm I could them put over them. I'm I could draft put, them before him. I could be down with a big tier there of yeah, saying four, Dobbins, four Acres, guys. Monty, Jacobs, and Gibson for me. I want those. I, I was, got those four guys in a tier. I was in some trade talks two weeks ago. And with Acres coming my way, I wasn't soliciting Acres. I was trying to get somebody else off somebody's team. And Acres keeps coming back to me in counter offers. And I had no idea. I don't know what, what I was looking at or what I guess I wasn't looking for his name. I had no idea he was as high on a lot of ranking services. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's I, RB14. He is so high right now. And I'm like, I, I just, to me, the injury, I, 
overall 45. So that's the end of the fourth couldn't, round. Couldn't pay Super that price. price. I, I wasn't – what I was – I probably should have got him in the trade and then retraded him to somebody else because right. I didn't realize that people were still so high on him. Not that he's not – a great guy and probably going to work out hard. But like you said, I just, and the situation could be fantastic. The right. situation well, the will be fantastic. If he can become, if, even if he can get the, the thing with youth all these situation guys. is what's keeping him elevated. It's e. not like he's put a bunch of work down on the field. E. Like, e. Dobbins and acres. They didn't bring anybody in. If they like, I just feel like if the team was that concerned with them, they would have loaded up on another running back. Like, yeah. like they brought Rams in, at least the Rams, have Hendo. They brought Hendo. Hendo's been around, but whatever. And you got you drafted Kyron super late. You brought in Mike Davis for yeah. the Ravens and ET. They drafted Snoop Connor in like the sixth round, and and J Rob is coming off an Achilles super late in the fucking season. So it's just to me, the team is I telling me whether it's uh, a dumb move by them or not. Like I feel like the team is kind of telling you they all feel pretty good about these fucking guys. Uh, well, I. For Acres and Dobbins, I can agree. I think the Jags were in such turmoil. It's like we can't expend another dollar on. We just took a running back in the first round last year, and he blew his foot off. And our team just went. Our coach getting sued. But you could. So they, like, they still. You still could have invested in a, in a like a, not a one round higher of a running back and and got yeah. somebody other than Snoop Connor. I'm just saying. I'm just great. Maybe uh, you know. I'm just saying from from that. St- I'm just like maybe the Jags are like, dude, we got a lot more sure, to worry fair. about than running backs. And if they, we, they did know. bring back Ryquell after he missed all season on COVID. But the sure. Rams. And the and the Ravens all 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 accounted for are really good franchises right, right now. Ravens have been for a long time. Rams just went all in a couple seasons in a row until they figured it out and got it right. Screw draft picks. We're gonna go get better. You know, we gave up everything to go get the cornerback Ramsey, and then it that wasn't working. Gave up everything again to go back and get go get Stafford, and it finally worked. It's like I agree with that point, Casey. Is good point. Like. Ravens, if they really, we know the Ravens are going to run the ball. And Gus has been an auto pick for me before this news. We we so. know we know the Ra- the Ravens want to run the ball, so it's like I guess if they were really that worried about Dobbins, then they probably should have done something about it. If the Rams, you know, maybe they like between maybe they like Henderson, if, you know, as well, a backup. Nothing not to like about Henderson, but he can't make it through the whole season. Yeah, like he's good for a little bit. But I just he can't didn't stay healthy. I just didn't see the Cam Akers love. I didn't see the ranking, the value. The you know, well, he he was he had a cult percent. following. It's a god landing spot, yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. he's he's still only twenty three, just turned twenty three, and the situation is awesome, right? But I mean, stays injured, right? Uh, obviously the Achilles, but he he only played thirteen games his rookie year, and the numbers aren't that great. He had rib cartilage separation, missed two games, and a high ankle sprain where he missed another game. Only 145 attempts, 625 yards, two touchdowns, 11 receptions. You know, it's not like anything crazy. He, I, I didn't even get the overall RB. That was from 2020. Um, so it's mm-hmm. not like he put down a ridiculous season. At least Dobbins had a pretty good, like, finish to that year. Nine touchdowns on 134 attempts, 805 yards, 18 receptions uh, on 24 targets. So, you know, you're still not getting uh, elite PPR production from, from Dobbins. And, and, and Cam – could potentially do that he, he does have a decent profile coming out of college for catching balls but it's like yeah i don't I mean, really I, know what's like he's so elevated like i'm gonna probably mitigate my risk here and i'm gonna drop him down below guys like monty and gibson yeah i i, I feel like dobbins was the guy that i was drafting ahead of all those guys and acres was probably behind him i've probably flip-flopped that and i'm i'm, I'm still I'm pro- so i guess i would go acres dobbins tear break monty jacobs gibson and I think I got all four of them in a tier, and then I would drop get Jacobs down a tier. Um, you want to make an argument for Monty? Well, why why are you dropping Jacobs out of the tier with those three other guys? He's probably arguably at least been as good as Monty. Well, I mean, David Montgomery's won you a couple championships. He was the RB1 in the last six games of the fantasy season yeah, each of I mean, the last two years. Sure, but, I mean, when you look overall, Jacobs has had just as good a season as Monty's had through the season long. I see what Jay's saying though. The 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 I, I love Monty. You're not gonna get it. I just don't know why Jacobs can't be isn't up in that. I feel like he's you, 
if you're going to give it to Monty, you got to give it to Jacobs. I, th- I mean, I think both of those guys right now. I love those are those are like are crucial targets in the draft. Huge values in yeah. the draft. You because you go in, especially you know, say you're a super flex, you got a couple of quarterbacks already, and you're looking around, being like, how can I put? We know we can get wide receivers. You probably get a wide receiver in between there, so you can get two quarterbacks, a wide receiver, and still come out with J- Josh Jacobs. Right. It's that's that's solid. And then Antonio Gibson. I mean, you know. I like Monty. I'd you know if, if you had to rank inside that tier, I'd put Monty at the top of the tier for you know I'm fine with that. Um, but I got Jacobs and Gibson in there, and you know I know we don't know what's going on with Gibson, but he he's turning into the value of the draft, and he keeps falling down. In the last last uh, Superflex mock we did not too long ago, Casey, you took Josh Jacobs in the sixth round at six eleven, right? As your third running back after you had Waller and two quarterbacks already, right? So I, I mean, fucking love that. How, why would you not? You could be mad about. You know them not giving him like if that if that's your best argument they didn't p- give a running back the fifth year option on a guy who came from Bill Belichick over there they didn't want to pay him eight million because they don't know what they're gonna get out of him that's the stupidest shit I've ever heard yeah like who else did they okay they drafted Zamir White but I mean Josh Jacobs is, has played a lot of football he's good we're, he goes maybe he goes to another team next year okay that's like we're discounting him because they didn't give him the fifth year option it just yeah. doesn't make any sense to me how many first how many fifth year options are gonna even be available. Down the line here, ET mm-hmm. might be the last like, one. Fucking none of them. So why are you paying him eight million bucks? Like you don't want to. Okay, whatever. Maybe next year you sign him, and you give him eight million bucks because he's earned it. Like they want to throw it. Like he's tied for fifth in targets and fourth in receptions with 54, 64 and fifty four. Like who's the better receiving back on that team? Brandon Bolden. Give me a fucking break. Like come on, man. Like Zamir White. He's never caught a ball in his life. Not that I <laughs> dislike Zamir White. Like Zamir a whole lot. He's got 13, I know, okay? I know. 13. I'm just, it fits my narrative right now, so yeah. Zamir can't catch. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he's the best running back on that fucking team. Yeah. Like, and that's going to be a good fucking team. There's going to be a lot of opportunities on there. Like Stock up Raiders. Like, what? Come on. Stock man. up Raiders. TV. Yeah, I don't really have a good answer for you. Uh, I just RB 13 last year, 14.5 points per game. I mean, it, he's not the reason he's not up there with the other guys is because he hasn't put up a lead of elite. So that's where we're at right now. We're with Monty Jacobs and Gibson. They, we were hoping that acres Dobbins, Monty Gibson would all come up here and make us be able to get that robust draft strategy, but it hasn't fucking happened yet. Right. Because and they haven't quite, they have there. None of those guys have averaged what Dalvin Cook and Austin Eckler have averaged. Right. That's all. That's the right. only reason we're having this conversation is and they get. Remember what Gibson was supposed to be two years ago? Yeah, he's only twenty four. Right. We we talk about he's four three six. He runs a four three six Naj- two. He's Najee Harris two twenty. Like, Najee what, Harris is twenty four and he's old. Yeah. Antonio Gibson's twenty four, and if he just had a good year last year, he'd be in the first round because we loved him two years ago. And I get it; they drafted B. Rob, and they brought McKissick back. That's got to give anybody pause. But yeah. you, there's enough talent here that again, you're just buying the dip a little bit when it comes, and it's like I'm going to take the four three, six foot, whatever, two hundred and twenty whatever pound guy. And yeah, I mean, he didn't stay healthy. He fumbles a little bit. They want to Rivera. I think wants to run the ball. Listen, Gibson, listen Gibson to was, this track record of these hit. hit. Gibson Injuries. was fourth in attempts, 258 attempts. Nobody, Nobody's telling you that. Right. He was fourth in attempts last year, and he had a hairline fracture in his shin and shouldn't <laughs> even fucking play it. Not only that, in June of 21, there was a blurb that he was still rehabbing a toe injury from 2020. Hey, he's going to get special cleats. Picked up a shoulder injury in week one that lingered on injury reports. All Didn't practice until like all throughout till week three when he picks up the shin injury, which is a hairline fracture, stress fracture. Carries that injury, doesn't miss a fucking game. Tapes it up. Gets a, another toe injury, a mild turf toe injury in week 15. Misses no games. Midweek hip injury in week 16. No game, no missed games. Finally misses some time with fucking COVID. So you're saying he's tough and he's a gamer. And fourth in, and and fourth in carries. Now number one in fumbles. Ninth so in targets. Like that. <laughs> and ninth in targets. Right. As much as McKissick and everyone ta- acts like he doesn't catch a single ball, ninth in targets. McKissick did miss some time last Stock year, up if Gibson. If I'm not he mistaken. Did. Sure. Stock up sure. Gibson. And they brought him back. And that, that, McKissick might have even went on IR, that, which was like three three or four games. That really hurt. And then they brought in B-Rob, and it was just the last stab in the back. Like you were, they He's sliced, a goal back. They sliced your Achilles from under mm-hmm. the bed, and then they came in, and they just jammed the fucking knife I think, in the back. Because B-Rob is like 230, 235, and it's like, oh, well, Gibson's 228. 
Right. And, you know, there's probably going to be some games where Gibson is wasn't very fun to start, but there's going to probably be some games where Gibson was really fun to start. And there's a lot of these running backs that we just taught. There's going to be some stinkers in just about every one of these. Josh Jacobs guys. will give you a stinker. Monty will give you a stinker. D- Josh Acres Jacobs. Gobbins, Josh Monty's Jacobs. waiting for the for the home stretch. Josh yep. Jacobs will pound the defense for seventy rushing yards, but that's the problem if he doesn't catch. But when he did, when he throw him a couple passes, well, and when he he's makes fifth him, in targets and fourth in receptions, he's doing work. Boy. But there's a couple games where he gets six and eight, and you're yeah. like, damn it. But then he gets twenty, and yeah. it's like, yeah, that's a just give him the ball more often. But stock up Raiders, which makes rising tide lifts all boats. Josh Jacobs is going to be better this year because the Raiders are going to be better. Gibson, 10th in yards per route run, 1.19. 6th in uh, yards after contact after, with all those injuries. Still was just trucking homies mm. and, and keeping it moving. Trucking homies. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to be completely out on on antonio gibson and i'm gonna i'll buy the dip and and i can i can i'm fine with putting him on the team but again all of these running backs it all comes down to how i'm building my team there certainly could be a chance where i where i bump eckler and cook back up and and for what it's worth i would take cook over eckler uh but that's do whatever you want to do i mean and yeah, but but for me, as well. after we get past these guys the, the monty the gibson and the jacobs now we're in like why the fuck does nobody want Zeke? It just it's just trendy to not want Zeke. I don't really understand why. Like I want, I'm getting Zeke in every single draft this year, <laughs> to, in the sixth round or fucking whatever, in a super flex, quintupling down. Like, give me that. Like, or Aaron Jones, or flip, even flip I mean, page. Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara, 27, gonna miss some games. It doesn't make you feel good. We've also had a, a long stre- a stretch here where. A lot of these running backs haven't made it into the twilights, and the, the stats are skewed of, like, 28, 29, 30. But would we be all that fucking – like, could we skew those stats? Like, five of these guys could make it into their twilight in the 28, 29, 30s and be crushing. I like, guess Alvin Kamara could easily be one of those guys. Right. We always see his agility workouts and the way he's working out with – elastic stuff and more, you know, his ability to take shots and not get off he balance does yoga. and the he's, stiff arms mean. Yeah. He gets hit in the hips and he's just, just keeps, keeps going. Uh, I, I like, Too mean. I like the chance for uh, Alvin Kamara to play into his twilight and be well, if, I mean, you know, if he just stops beating guys up at the pro Bowl, Right. So, you know, we get into this kind of this is probably the last tier we'll discuss on here and, and maybe bring in a couple more guys. But it's basically the guys left now are are AK, Zeke, Aaron Jones and Derrick Henry. Right. Um, and now and the Zeke Zeke has I looked it up. He's got a he's got nine. 19- 1,990 career carries, including the care. playoffs. There's, Matt there's Waldman some, came on and said it's all garbage. There, well, no, not, he said that a bunch in college right. coming out was garbage. But there are some historical data to say that after you hit 1,600 career carries, you, you're going to dip off, which yeah. he hit that before this past season and finishes RB6. With a torn PCL the entire season. Tore like PCL six, six. in week four. Missed yeah. zero games. Okay, so what are we talking about here? <laughs> Guy still had was fucking 282 attempts with a torn PCL and fucking was RB6. I mean... and How many? Uh, 282 attempts. Oh, I got that wrong. I think, or maybe that snaps. I don't know. I got two hundred thirty snaps. He had way more snaps than that. Um, maybe I, I might I might have those numbers jumbled up. Either way, I know he started off really good, and before the PCL injury, he looked fucking sick. Except for the one game against the Bucks, where the run the run defense run of the Bucks, the Bucks was shutting shit down from the end of last season into that or the end of the season before into that other season. Then the Bucks defense kind of fell apart. Yeah, but first half, first couple of games, you weren't running with all the, the Tony Pollard love and all the how sixty three fucking targets for Zeke last year. That's seventh. 47 receptions. Like, there's so much Tony Pollard love, and he's got to take it over. Like, I fucking like Tony Pollard, too. Tony Pollard's just fine. But Zeke was still fucking good last year, and he was really good before he got fucking hurt. And then he's wearing this ridiculous knee brace around all year and clearly wasn't right, and people are like, oh, he's washed. He's fucking hurt, and he's playing. Still RB6, 15.1 points a game, which is good for 15th. Played all 17 games. Number five in red zone touches, which should go up, I think. Uh, just I, 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 Zeke is just going to fall down, and it's. I mean, he's tied to the Cowboys for fucking two or three more years. They're going to use the fucking dog shit out of him because they're paying him a ton of money, and they're just. Gonna, that's what Jerry's going to fucking do, and. 
for the next two years, Zeke is going to get the ball. Like, that's plain and simple. Like, I like it. And pa- Pollard's 25. I mean, he's, he's, Pollard's not like he's sitting he's, over here being 22. He needs a contract. You think, you're, you think you're signing Pollard up for another year for the Cowboys? They ain't got money for that, Bo. No, they ain't got money for that. They got, they're going to have to pay. I'm thinking his contract year. I can effort that. Effort um, that. But, I mean, Zeke's just that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to anchor down, uh, you know, obviously, you know, in, in two years, maybe you don't want Zeke. Uh, he's clearly a, a dying asset already everybody the public court of public opinion says fuck zeke but it's like i'm gonna take zeke yeah zeke's rb 23 i'm gonna take zeke or aaron jones in every single one of these later rounds and zeke seemingly tends to hang around even a little longer than aaron jones in a lot of these i feel like but give me either one of those guys but zeke just with the sheer volume of what he's gonna get in my opinion and still be really strong um pollard's in a contract year right and I mean, you could say Pollard got a thousand yards rushing or whatever, and Pollard does look good when he gets his chances. I think it's but, total yards, right? But Pollard needs he definitely didn't have a thousand yards rushing. Mm-mm. Pollard needs the other guy. Zeke doesn't. Right when Zeke was well, Zeke didn't miss any time. But there's been times when Pollard got the backfield to himself in prior years, and he wasn't. And it, it wasn't, wasn't a good start. It wasn't twenty points every time like you were hoping it would be. So basically, the Aaron Jones, Alvin Kamara, obviously Kamara's got the suspension, but the Aaron Jones, Ezekiel Elliott, those those guys, you just don't have to take the first one. You can take the last one. Like right. I said, the cheapest cheapest of that group, you take the cheapest of the other group ahead of those, and then you you know hopefully you came out of that six rounds with two, maybe three running backs, but two, maybe a younger one and a Zeke or. Or an Aaron Jones, and we'll take it from there. Just to point out, you had in the super flex mock we did, you had Josh Allen at one two. You go Watson at two eleven. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun mm. Watson. Christian McCaffrey at the three two, stealing. Kenneth Walker at four eleven. Waller. Josh Jacobs at six eleven. I just mentioned that, so I was talking about that. And then you come back at the at the next turn there, six eleven goes into seven two. You had AJ Dillon. So you got two young cats, Walker and Dylan. Jacobs is not old. Christian McCaffrey, we'll see. He's old for a number of a running back age, but he could be the best, highest point scorer, quarterbacks included for the next two years. And this is tight end premium, so Darren Waller in there. Right, right. And, and super flex. So you got two quarterbacks. You got four running backs, two young, uh, one middle-aged and one old. A championship winner and adult and a Darren Waller, and then you start, you know, you hammer wide receivers for a couple rounds. So like, just so you know, practicing what you're preaching there, you got, and and you just, you know, to open up the show, you're talking about not forcing it. I wouldn't say you forced it. You, you know, I don't have you, another single draft that looks like that. Right, it just you, happened to that. Just it's happened beautiful. to happen. It 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 looks good. You know, obviously at that point you're gonna have to get some of those wide receivers to well, so, you're gonna have to pick so the good ones on I, the way I meant out. To, I meant to say this earlier, but like I've been a really robust running back guy. That's where I've had the most success, Mm -hmm. plain and simple. But I can play this with a with a with a one RB and then come down here and take your flyers on Cooks and Spiller and uh, Rashad Pennies and Marlon Max and Gus Johnson and and, uh, Gus Edwards. I can I'm fine with playing that way. It doesn't bother me at all. Spiller, I can get all those guys. Uh, Yeah, uh, I don't don't mind that at all. Um, But. Yeah. Okay. So I'm in here, and I probably I need some I need some veteran leadership for my wide receivers. <laughs> I could I could buy that. Yeah. I could buy that. Just like you can buy, you know. Oh, you can get that cheap. Right. You can get a wide receiver cheaper. Than you can get that running back. Right. Mm-hmm. Also, the last couple of years in this league, what's happened? There's been a fuck every rookie draft. There's ten wide receivers that are fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. There's been no running backs. Like every year you get maybe one or two. And it's like maybe this year finally it happens. But it's like, you know, you can come in with a little bit more of a mindset of maybe risking a little bit more on the running back to start with, knowing that it seems like more and more the wide receiver position, there's three starters on every team that fucking score good points. Yeah. Like, and and they just keep coming in more and more pro ready and, right. and more and more ready to roll. Like, I mean, it's just... It's easy, a whole lot easier to 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 get those those wide receivers on your team than running backs, which is no no, no nothing groundbreaking. It's not a secret, yeah. Um, but just saying that, like in in my head, it's always I'm trying to get the running backs that those top. If you don't have a top three pick, you're probably not getting one that great running back that's in the draft, right? But then there's you know you there's been like five or six receivers in every draft that have been fucking awesome. Love it. 
Uh, so, you know, it's e- it's a whole lot easier to make up that position. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying just go forcing, use that mantra now to go force. Because after I kind of was thinking about that, then, you know, I, I ended up going into a draft that, that way. And I ended up not coming away with a bunch of running backs. It just didn't work. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just kind of pointing that out a little bit. So, um, I, well, Derek Henry is really the enigma of all this for me. I mean, he ends yeah. up going, uh, he's pr- like, I never take anybody and take him off of my board, but I think just because where he ends up, he's going, RB 10. He just never is going to like, I'm not, 33 I'm not overall like, I'm not ADP. like a do not draft these 10 guys that'll ruin the draft that your idiot draft mates are drafting. Like, I mean, it's all fucking relative to where they end up. Like, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Don't, maybe don't take him here, but if he's here, I'm going to do it. And Henry, Henry could easily be the RB one. For it's sure, not going to surprise anybody if he goes out and gets another 150 yards a game and two touchdowns. Would it every be time. even that surprising if Derrick Henry was good until he was 30? He's just fucking built different, dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. he can't be Adrian Peterson. Yeah, exactly. A tall Adrian Peterson, he or does. he's huge and has a screw in his foot and sucks for the rest of his life. I, yeah, he's I got don't. a screw and a plate, <laughs> right? That, that's the, now he uh, did come back and get 20 carries good. in the playoffs, only for 60 yards. Uh, I wouldn't say it looked quite the same, but you know, did come back. They give him a free, give him an off season. They could have easily won that game. Tannehill Maybe. threw two terrible interceptions. Right, and, grease that, uh, grease that plate, and screw up and bring him back around. I, I'm, I'm with Casey. I, don't, I haven't taken Derrick Henry in any of these mocks we've done all off season long. Um, I, that one draft where he slips, I, I might be, you know. I used to use this term luxury pick in the fifth and the sixth round because I love my team already so much. But I've learned that you say, oh, well, I can luxury pick this Derrick Henry. But I've learned that that opportunity cost of somebody like, say, I, you know, may, Derrick Henry slipped into the late sixth round. Let's just say, hypothetically. And the, and, the one, and the one I'm looking at, he's 5'11 right here in the, in the draft I'm looking at. Um, but, like, let's just say he slips close enough and he's right neck and neck with Jamison Williams. Right, I can luxury pick Derrick Henry. I already got two good running backs, and look at this. I, if he's a, he could be the RB one, and just like Casey said, he could be good for the next three years. But what if he's not? And what if it's Jamison Williams or somebody I like is awesome? Right. You know, I'm gonna be kicking myself every time I look back at that original draft for that startup when I passed on Jamison Williams and took Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is gonna go before Jamison Williams in every startup you see this year. That's unless because especially since Jameson Williams is hurt and he gets no camp hype because he's not going to be playing. Well, Derrick Henry only played eight games last year and was on pace for almost two thousand yards and twenty touchdowns. You know what I mean? Precisely. That's why he's precisely I get going. In and the I'm just third throwing round. that out there. I'm just I'm just looking at a draft and I just look at a name who's uh, those rookie wide receivers that are always going in the seventh and eighth round that are basically in the middle of the first round rookie picks. They're not when you. Five years ago, I was luxury picking somebody, and I had to real. I had to learn that I really learn. am. I, I, you, there is no luxury pick in the first five, six rounds of a startup draft. You're giving up something. You're luxury picking in the twelfth round, maybe. You're not luxury picking when there's still first round talent on the board. Right, Jamison Williams stuff. You know, first round draft pick stuff like that. Jamison Williams, luxury pick. That's luxury, a luxury pick. <laughs> right. So it feels so. better than it probably should. Too, Henry, but. Henry probably bottoms out that list for me of all the guys we just talked about. Um, and then, you know, then, then, you know, we're going to, then we start getting into, uh, you know, the Lenny's, the Mitchell's, the Dillon's, the Connors, the CEH's, the Sanders, the Harris's and the cooks, but that is for, uh, another time. Uh, anybody got anything else? Got they bed want to, beyond. Uh, yeah. That they want to close with or, um, in review or anything else to say or, no, I think I'm good. We put these guys in an order for your pleasure, but that's not what it's about. It's context. It's how you build your team, and there's guys that you're going to be targeting, and there's guys you're going to miss on. And right, so sliding Cook and Eckler behind Et and and Cook Eckler and Chubb behind Et and and Kenneth Walker, Walker isn't you know you're going to say how, that's, you how that? can you do that? That's crazy because it's like well I guess I mean because I'm fine with taking Cook and Eckler where you would have I mean if you know fourth round. I'll take Cook and Eckler, I guess. Third round, probably not. Like I'm, I, there's. But you know, you you're, you're, you're but, you don't have to take. You're not taking Walker in the third round because you can take him. No, in take the fourth him in the round. fourth round, sure. Take him in the fifth round right. if it's slipper flex. You can, you know, but if if I got Cooper Cup and I got Devontae Adams or Stephon Diggs only get one already, of those two. well, no, I mean not in the like for whatever. Like you could you could probably get both of those guys. 
Potentially, possibly. It's you'd, definitely possible. You'd probably have to take Devontae a little higher than than we've been seeing him going. But if if you're near the back of a draft and Cooper and you want to take Cooper Cup at, in your first round and take Devontae in your second round, and then just take a bang and redraft and Cook, team and try and win and your first and dynasty your top league. three picks, and then you know, fuck from there on out. Just like I said, mix in old with new. I'm I'm not saying I'm against that, and I'm not saying that I I'm that those guys don't deserve to get up there because they're going to be the top point getter. There is no if fans are really butts about it unless they get hurt, but right. you know, it's, it's contextual for me. So I hope, hopefully we got all the points across about where we are going and, and how it's maybe not that important to have them in a, in a necessarily a, a, a list from top to bottom, but just know the areas and the players that you have ahead and behind them from the wide receiver, tight end quarterback position and how you want to build your team and how your team, you know, I, Go in with a plan, but it's you're foolish to just hold that plan, you know, because you just you're either giving you've said it multiple times. You're either giving your league mates too much credit or not enough credit. And we don't mm-hmm. know how that's going to go until the draft unfolds. Yeah, most of the time it's too much credit. And then halfway through the draft, you're like, oh, these these two guys are good. They got it. Yeah, you know, there's right. two there's two guys in here. That and then just really when good. you think uh, Jeffrey A. 36 is an idiot. He goes and snipes your guy that you thought you could wait around on. And you're like, son of a B had made a good pick all fucking draft. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. All right. Well, I'm good. I think that wraps that up. Yeah. Let's get the appreciate FF y'all for here. joining us. <laughs> Tell us what your f- f- fantasy. Uh, definitely. If you made it this far in the video, let me get a subscription and send me a video or send me a little screenshot of, of sending, of giving us a five star review on your platform of choice. I needed that five star. So somebody's iTunes getting that free and free Spotify. T-shirt. I'm going to yep. send you a t-shirt. I'll, we're going to do a drawing. We'll do a random order. I'll put the entries in, in a random generated thing and uh, let the computer pick a number and then I'll contact you and get you sent a fresh tea. So really appreciate y'all for joining us. Whew. If you want more, hit that Patreon, $5 dollar. We definitely did. Uh, we already talked about these guys a few days ago. It's probably be like a week ago at this point by the time I get this bitch edited. Uh, so we're getting in it earlier over there. We talked about more guys. We're going to go over there and talk about more guys. Yeah, we'll we're get doing the, these mocks all off season long. We're doing leagues. We'll get the Discord Lenny, Mitchell, channel. Dylan, Connor, CEH kind of all. We'll kind of get a, the rest of how you would go through a team build in there over there in, in, in the coming days. Uh, so. We were going to go right after this, but we went too long. On Big Cut was late. Big Cut was getting a massage a little late, and then we went we went long. He said, sir, it. would you like to extend to this massage? And he said, uh, I'll just tell him I left my computer at home. Yeah. Big Cut got, <laughs> Co got the table shower. <laughs> never done that before. <laughs> all right <laughs> hey it's more common than you'd think hey we appreciate y'all we'll see you next time <laughs> peace <laughs>